Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of The Stash, report from The Stash Project. Today is the 6th of January, 2017, and we're into the new year. So, looking forward to another great year of bringing you The Stash Report, as well as all of the great kits that are going to be coming out this year, and we only know, you know, just the first bit of them. So it should be a fun and exciting year. Um, starting up, we'll do the uh, kit announcements, some information that has filtered in the last two weeks since we've done our last show, and then we'll talk about the couple of kit releases that there were. There are only three uh, that have come out in the last couple of weeks, and then uh, we'll cover some uh, new and exciting products on the uh, aftermarket, so that way uh, you can punch out at any time uh, you choose to and not listen to the whole thing. <clears throat> I wanted to think up front real quick. Uh, I'm going to dig around and find the article so that I can uh, post it, uh, a link to it in the description. But there was an article out of the uh, Champaign, Illinois newspaper talking about how Habico, uh, which is the parent company of Ravel, and of course they own Ravel of Germany now as well, and Trax and Estes and all the rest of that, um, they did not pay their employee stock ownership program payout at the end of the year. And apparently there are a couple of long-term employees that had... Uh, you know, retired or been forced out uh, over the course of the years after the merger and things like that, and uh, none of those people got their lump, pay, lump sum payments that they were promised before the end of 2016. Uh, Habico is describing their situation as being, quote, a hobby-based recession. Uh, however, in the article, they talked to several other manufacturers who say that while sales were not exactly stellar in 2016, they were not uh, recessive in any way. They were flat. Uh, or showed small increasing, small you know sales increases. However, they were not recessive in the sense that they lost money. Only Habico seems to have this problem, which it's uh, hard to tell if that is based on the fact that uh, you know obviously your modeling division puts out lackluster products, or the fact that Trax is not the go-to RC company anymore. Um, a lot of that from both Ravel. And tracks depends. I, I don't know whether that's a, a, a you know a separate company mentality that just has sort of taken over both, or if that's a corporate mentality. But it seems to be seems to me that uh, both tracks and Ravel, especially, uh, lived in the mentality that well, no one else makes model kits but them, or nobody else makes RC cars but them, and uh, therefore they don't really have to try that hard because there's only one place to get them. And then of course that's not true. Uh, you know, the hobby, various hobby people that are talked about in this article, you know, say that they're, you know, receiving increased pressure from international sales and it's easier to get stuff from overseas now than it ever was been, or ever has been, rather, was been. Uh, and, you know, this you know, causing difficulty to the domestic manufacturers. But again, none of them had recessive sales the way Ravel says they have. Ravel put in this article said something to the effect of like, uh, you know, well, people from overseas, meaning China, are stealing our ideas and putting them out there, and you know, which I assume must involve tracks more than it does Ravel because I don't really see anyone uh, over in uh, China or anywhere else in Asia producing anything that looks like a Ravel kit. I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't want to, uh, you know, you have Meng, which does, you know, those two American models, the F-350 and the, and the H-1 Hummer, but I don't think that Ravel had an H full detail H-1 Hummer up their sleeve all these years and they just didn't feel like putting it out. So, uh, typical excuse making out of Illinois. What can I tell you? Uh, but like I said, I'm going to dig up the article. I, I've actually read it. It's a real article legitimately from the Champagne newspaper. It's not just me saying some stuff negatively. It's it's legitimately a, 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 an article that was in the paper. So like I said, I'll dig that out and put it in the description <coughs> below the video at some point. It may not be there if you're watching this right after it gets uploaded because I'm planning to record this, edit it, put it into upload, and then go to bed for work. So uh, it, it may be later this afternoon, this evening, tomorrow uh, before that link is there. Just because the editing software doesn't really play well with us, with that sort of thing, I have to add it afterwards. So, on the kit announcement side of things, we have uh, a few things, uh, mostly, well, actually all of them, being overseas. If you watch the January video, you know what Ravel kits are coming out this month and what uh, Round 2 kits are coming out this month. Uh, for February, uh, they're putting a listing up for ICM, saying that they're going to reissue, basically, their Model T 
Uh, this time it's going to come with the three figures that they also made. For people who don't realize, ICM made a Henry Ford, a engineer, and a mechanic figure, all 124 scale, to go with these uh, Model A's that always sold separately. Uh, they're going to package it all together, and that's for February, February release. Also, uh, from Aoshima, Aoshima has said that they are going to run all four of the 14-inch wheel sets that they ran in December, as well as the Pagani and the, and the Diablo GT, uh, because they have sold out on their end of all of those products. Now, that doesn't mean you still can't get the kits or the wheels, depending on what retailer or vendor you go through. That just means that Aoshima, at Aoshima headquarters, doesn't have any more. So once they sell out of the, the system, then there aren't going to be any more until February. So, uh, you know, commending everybody out there, speaking of hobby recessions, for selling out not only two model kits and the detail upsets, because the photo watch sold out too, but four wheel sets too. So uh, while Ravel can't find their own ass with, their, with a you know telephone pole, uh, Aoshima is selling out of $40 model kits, $15 photo etch, and $9 wheel sets. So take that for what it's worth. Uh... Hasegawa has announced for April uh, they're going to be reissuing their Nissan, or Nissan, wow, their Honda Civic Ferio. <clears throat> for anybody who followed the show for the duration, knows that when the uh, Civic was reissued out of Hasegawa as the streetcar, the ETI, VTI, and the Seer 2, uh, you know, what that begat was, of course, the race cars that have been coming out over the last several months. There'll be another one coming out here shortly in the month of January. And I've always said, well, I wonder when the four-door is coming, because the four-door is the most expensive one on the secondary resale market. I don't know why. It's not a very great kit. I mean, you know, it's something one of those things where it's just something to have. It's a four-door Civic, and there's only the one. And uh, so it tends to sell for quite a bit. <clears throat> So if you happen to be watching this and you happen to have any of those that you're sitting on thinking that's going to be, you know, your kid's college fund, uh, you have about 70 days or so to get rid of those before they're going to be worth $17.23 a piece because they're going to reissue the kit. And it's going to be identical to the one you have unless you have one of the just tunings or one of the other little uh, special ones that they made along the way. Of course, now we would like to think that sometime, perhaps in 2017, might be early 2018, depends on how well the Ferio sells, like it's not going to sell out, uh, that they may reissue the four-door race Civic, because there were three or four of those kits done as well, and, uh, you know, I'll take every Group A race car you can get me. And then last but not least, moving back to March, uh, Aoshima has announced their... Uh, sort of reboxing set, as you may recall, you know, Aoshima is reboxing all these things into the model car, the tune model car, and the tune parts series. So in the model car series, they're going to be reissuing their 72 Celica 1600 GT and their 77 Celica 1600 lift, or 2000 GT liftback, uh, both with their original photo etch, which is something that has, it has not come with uh, for quite a while, probably the last... I don't know when the last time we would have the photo etch. May not have had the photo etch ever again since the, since the original issue or the issue that had included the photo etch parts because I can't think of one I've seen with photo etch parts in it for the last five years at least. Uh, now keep in mind these are still the same uh, Beskar vintage kits that they've always been and they're still the same motorized kits that they've always been. The photo etch is sort of unexpected because, uh, again, that was sort of a one-time deal and I haven't seen it back since then. Uh but those are, of course, like I said, getting moved into the model car lineup because that'll be sort of be the catalog kits, if you will. Also in that model car lineup for March will be the 2004 Nissan R34 GTR Z-Tune. And you're sitting there going, well, that's a little late for an R34, isn't it? Well, that was the Z-Tunes were done after the production run was over. They actually bought, uh, was it 50, I believe, low mileage original R34s and then stripped them down at Nismo and put the, made put them out as Z-Tunes. So uh, they're effectively model yeared. Uh, up in advance, I, I don't know if they necessarily got vinned particularly uh, with you know new vins or whether that was just you know what what Nissan considers them to be after they've been refurbished. But be that as it may, and then also uh, from Nissan, the 2009 uh, R35 GTR in the V spec formation that does have a engine insert in it uh, and a nifty purple paint job as well. In the tuned model car, they're going to box up two kits. Uh, one of them will be the uh, venerable uh, Urace, or your ass, R34 Skyline 25 GTT. That's the four-door drifting car from the D1 Grand Prix series that has since been reboxed uh, into the Urace. Just, hey, it's a street car now uh, that's been reissued a number of times in the last several years. And they're also going to be boxing into the tuned series the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10 
uh, C West Racing Edition. That's the white car of the two because there were two C West Evo tens. One had a silver car. One had a white car. The white car racing. The 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 silver car uh, street. I don't necessarily know why what designation that is about because they're all but they're both street cars. I mean, neither one of them is like a race car. Race car. So it's just what C West calls them apparently. And then in the uh, tuned parts series, they're going to be doing another set of four of the 14-inch wheels. So these are going to be some more wheels that have not been out for a little while. And they're going to be the Formula Mesh, the Shadow Spoke, the Steel Wheel Type 1, which a lot of people call Tekken wheels because Tekken is technically Japanese for steel. It is not Japanese for steel wheel, however. So like some people like to claim it is. And then also the Techno Phantom. So those are, uh, again, some 14-inch wheels. Going to be on those little bulbous tires the way the uh, the ones that just were uh, put out have. <clears throat> and again, I know that will be very popular to some people who have been long lacking some small wheels for their uh, you know, smaller cars or Skylines and their Civics and whatnot. Uh, so that takes us out of kit uh announcements into kit releases. Like I said, there are only three. So the first one is a domestic kit, and that is the Mobius 1965 Mercury Comet. Yes, the Mercury Comet has finally uh, landed. Uh, it came out, I want to say, about 10 days ago at this point. Uh, it seemed to have very uh, uneven distribution, to put it nicely. Uh, some places had a lot of them, and some places had none of them. Some places were, were after the kit had already been into certain hobby shops and certain vendors for like a week. Some places didn't even know it was coming out this month. It came out, uh, you know, in December. It, it came out right before New Year's. Uh, you know, some people didn't didn't even realize the kit was coming out. So I don't know exactly who's not communicating with who there. But by now, here in the first weekend of or second weekend technically of January, you should uh, be able to find it pretty much anywhere. Uh, initial impressions from various ven various uh, modelers online seem to be you know it's better than uh, several of the releases. Although it still has a number of Mobius like problems. Those being that the windshield and the side window. Uh, Shapes are not correct. The motor, the engine, the 289 is a very generic, uh, very softly detailed 289. It has possibly the worst exhaust headers I've ever seen on any kit. It honestly looks like a, a piece of pine branch. It's just a straight pipe with some some hooks coming down off of it. It doesn't look anything like a 289 header whatsoever. Uh, a lot of people were like, well, you know, you just put the 289 out of the 67 uh you know, Mustang that AMT did into it. Well, that's fantastic solution. Why do I have to go buy an $18 model kit to put into this $30 model kit that just got tooled now Do I need to take the engine out of something that's 25 years old? I really, you know, don't want to be the guy that's constantly up the, you know, the American manufacturer's butt about stuff. But seriously, if you're going to do this kind of stupid stuff, then this is what the result's going to be. Um, we've seen... Uh, some hinting out of Japan that the drag version of the Hudson is pretty close to being released. You know, Mobius has not put out a confirmation of anything here domestically, so I'm not going to talk about it in a sense of time spec, but it should be out in a couple of months at least. Uh, last time I think I saw something about Mobius saying something publicly, it was supposed to be out in around February. Uh, I'm seeing some January release dates out of Asia, which I find to be you know wildly optimistic if it's not going to come out until February, according to Mobius' own people. Uh, the other kits are uh, Japanese, and they are a reissue of the Aoshima Nissan 430 Cedric four-door hardtop 280E Brome from 1981. Again, all these Cedric kits with their wild, vast amounts of uh, you know numbers and letters and things like that, but <laughs> it is the only way to get this particular generation of Cedric at this point. Best car vintage, so motorized, generic chassis, and all that stuff. And the other uh, reissue actually is not from overseas. It actually is also a domestic reissue. This is the last of the December 2016 kits from round two, and it is the <clears throat> Honda Road Racer. Because we're not going to say this guy's name because, you know, that just sounds bad. Uh, but this is the uh, replica of the, I believe it's 1970. Let me take a peek here. Yeah, it's 1970 Day two, Daytona 200 winner. Uh, it's a 1A scale motorcycle. I couldn't tell you anything about it other than the fact that it's molded in pearl orange. And uh, it's finally out here in the first week of January. Uh, it was a little late, but nonetheless, it is finally out. So let's talk about some uh, upcoming, well, actually, no, before we talk about upcoming products, let's talk about some products that have been released out of the uh, folks over in Playmos. Playmos has several things that are ready to go to market, or actually are on the market at this point, and they are, in the wheels department, the interwoven wheels for the Tamiya Acura NSX, the 2016 kit that just came out. 
uh, that's those will allow you to you know do the other set of wheels that you can order an Acura NSX with or a Honda NSX with, and then the other set of wheels that are done are the uh, Sidewinder wheels for the Dodge Viper uh, ACT. I believe that's what I want to say. ACR, excuse me, the Viper ACR. And these uh, come with uh, a, a little photo etched faces here, so you can put two different versions of the Dodge Viper Snakehead into the wheel center. That's a nice little touch. Uh, they uh, are designed to utilize the Ravel tires, uh, which may or may not be the best thing, I suppose, depending on how you feel about Ravel's tires, but uh, there are no tires included with this. It's just the wheel sets. On the photo etch side of things, going with that set of wheels for the Dodge Viper ACR is the... Uh, photo etch set for that kit. Uh, looks to be fairly robust and complete. Uh, I'm, I'm still not a big fan. They included these in the uh, Dodge Viper, or not Dodge Viper, but the, the Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 and the Mazda Miata Club Spec, these photo etch seatbelts. Not a big fan of the photo seatbelt. I'd rather have some seatbelt material, but, you know, at least you have something to go with if you want to go with that, uh, you know, route. And it has some, uh, you know, matter transfers as well. And then the other photo etch that is out uh, this month is the Porsche 918 Spider for the Ravel of Germany or Ravel USA uh, boxed version, which includes uh, you know your brakes and your vents and some uh, uh, metal transfers as well. Which uh, in the case of the Porsche photo etch, you have to use the uh, tr the metal transfer on the photo etch itself to make it three dimensional uh, to make it look like the kit. <clears throat> now, upcoming projects for from uh, the fine people at Playmos would be some wheel sets for both the AMG GT and the uh, McLaren 570S. Kind of disappointing we didn't get either one of those kits being distributed in the United States in January, but hopefully next month. Uh, for the uh, for the AMG GT, there are uh, two sets of wheels. One is the uh, sort of forked 10 spokes that uh, the original car from 2016 wore. Uh, you see the box art, you know, has that sort of uh, very bright yellow car. If you look at a lot of the press release photos for a 2016 AMG GT, you're going to see that bright yellow car on this set of wheels. I don't know what the set of wheels are uh, exactly that Ravel included. I, they look like sort of the 2017 wheels that you can get the car with, but I don't think they're that far ahead of things. And then uh, you can also get this set for the AMG GT in the future, and it's sort of a split five-spoke, although it's not the split five-spoke that I prefer, which uh, is sort of a more solid uh, five-spoke, and it has a little sort of uh, knife cut taken out of it to, to split the spoke, as it were. Uh, over on the 570S side of things, you have these wheels, these uh, sort of starfish five-spoke wheels, uh, which are there to replace the original kit wheels, and then they're also going to be doing this set of wheels, which is for the 540C. If you're not up on your McLarens, the 540C is basically the 570S with about 35 less horsepower and some different uh, badging and a less aggressive rear diffuser. And what Playmos is going to do is uh, give you these 540C wheels. Now remember, there's going to be photo etch sets for both the AMG GT and the McLaren. So there, when the McLaren photo etch gets done, it's going to have the 540C badging on the photo etch uh, frets and the in the uh, you know metal transfers. And all you're going to have to do is go into the kit and cut out uh, basically all the veins in the diffuser. If you look at the diffuser on the back of a 570S, it has two very large arches that have a, a middle vein that runs down through them. And then the center sort of box section has two veins in the, in the box section. Basically, you cut all those off, so you just have the shapes without the actual diffuser parts going down. Uh, at least from the appearance thing, I'm sure it's probably actually different underneath the car. But from just looking at the back of the car, sitting on the street, those are what those all those little veins that are in the middle of the diffuser are what's missing. So you know, just going in there and sort of uh, taking a uh, side cutter and cutting all that extraneous plastic off, and then combining it with this wheel set and the photo etch set. Uh, be interested to see if you're going to need two photo etch sets, or if there's going to be enough on there to make a 570s and a 540c out of the same tree. We'll see when that stuff gets uh, shown publicly. Uh, but it gives you the option if you're really, really into the McLaren 570S shape and you want to make something that, uh, you know, if you're not a fan of the Stash Report or you're just not a fan of Playmos, you may not realize it even exists. Uh, for a unique little model, uh, you can make your own base model McLaren. And my cat just knocked a glass off of the counter over there. <laughs> I don't know if you guys will be able to hear that in the video or not, but I thought for sure that was going to shatter. Thank God we have carpeted floors in the kitchen. 
the bane of existence in the stain world, but whew, yikes, that could have been bad. <clears throat> now, last but not least, before we go out to play most, is uh, a number of uh, things we're going to show you here for the Z28 trans kit that's going to be coming up. Uh, I don't think it's actually going to get out this month like they uh, initially thought, but uh, just see, watching the development of this has been fascinating. Uh, first up, we're going to show you some 3D CAD uh, drawings of the engine details that are going to be done. Uh, this one's sort of an overview of the entire thing. You're going to, get, of course, get this new shock tower and the new engine cover with the new air cleaner, uh, cold air intake, as well as the new radiator. And moving from that to the actual radiator itself, you see this is sort of the uh, front side, the side that would be facing the street, which has the oil cooler on it and the electric fan. And flipping it over onto the back side, the side that would face the engine, is the second electric fan as well as the dry sump oil uh, tank. So that'll be very, very nice and very interesting that they went to all this detail. Uh, the, 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 the Shelby is also very detailed, but there weren't as many changes required in that kit uh, to make it into what it is. Obviously, the Z28 needs new body parts as well as engine and interior parts. So I'm very, very happy to see. Now, granted, happy to see and paying more is probably going to equal the same thing here, but very happy to see they're going that extra mile to really you know, trans kit the thing into what it's supposed to be rather than just being like, hey, here's some body parts and hey, here's like some seats and good luck with that. Uh, speaking of seats, here's some uh, shots of the first, these, these were 3D prints, mind you, not actual finished product. First 3D prints of the seat along with the uh, the stick shift, as it were, for the center console. There are no automatics here. Your Z28 came with a, with a uh, standard. And showing the back of the seats as well. Uh, another thing that's been done in its first 3D printing are these brake rotors for the uh, Z28. They'll also be sold separately because they are the same uh, brake set that comes out of the ZR1. So they're making these to also fit the 2010 ZR1 uh, kit from Ravel as well. Check this out, guys. There are separate brake pads and retainer clips and, uh, you know, obviously a, a sort of a center brake rotor itself along with photo etched faces for it. And then everything fits together like this. This may be some of the most, especially with the separate brake pads, the most detailed brakes out there. Uh, there is some discussion that perhaps these will be done again later with different, uh, you know, the different center, if you will, to not make it a giant hole like that that the Revell kit needs to mount onto the Revell suspension, but to uh, make it for a polycap type fit so that these, wheel, these brakes could be added to other cars in the future. So stay tuned for that. And then lastly are some uh, shots of the 3D prints of the hood. There was one of the body parts put together, but it, it really kind of looks sloppy in its first iteration, and I forgot to download the pictures anyway. And this is the hood. The hood is going to be three pieces and assembles just like the actual car's hood does. So, uh, you know, you're seeing the top of the hood here, and then as we move along to the bottom of the hood, and then, you know, here's the three pieces shown separately. So, again, really stepping out the detail, really stepping up the, uh, you know, the underside of the hood has, you know, bracing and things like that. It's not just smooth. Uh, just really uh, going to be very, very interesting to see this trans kit come together. Is you know, like I said, going to be pricey, but I think in the end it's also going to be worth it. Uh, another thing we can show you here, this is from Bell Kits. Uh, these are the first sort of three-dimensional 3D renderings of the uh, the Opel Manta Group B rally car. Uh, BMAX has also said that they basically have gotten the decals in for the Volkswagen Polos, the 2015 and the 2016 kits. Now remember, this actually require a new body and things like that. It's not just a set of decals. But the decals finally came in from the printer, which I assume will be cartograph again, since that's what they went with with the escorts, and I don't think you're going to go back to whatever printed up the last set of polos, which were awful sets of decals. Uh, and they have to basically build models for Volkswagen uh, and to, you know, give them to Volkswagen to, to approve. And then once Volkswagen approves of those, those should be out sometime in the first quarter of 2017. When the Opel will be out, not exactly sure, but there will be two different Opel models. One is going to have the night lights and one is not, or perhaps one will be right-hand drive and one will be left-hand drive. They're showing like two different variations here, and there are two stock numbers for the Opel, so there are going to be two separate model kits. Now, what liveries they're going to replicate and if the night racing parts are going to come in both and if it's going to be right-hand, right left-hand drive in both or what's going to happen you know, in that, haven't exactly got very much clarity on, uh, but we'll certainly keep an eye out. And then I think lastly, in the uh, 
aftermarket thing here are some decals we can show you from a company that's uh, over in Germany. Sort of a small decal manufacturer that's really uh, going to grab the whole uh, BM BMAX M3 craze while they can. They're basically resizing some decals they had done in, long ago in the past for the Fujimi M3 and rescaling them for the BMAX. And these should be available hopefully at the end of this month. Uh, I'm still talking with the guy trying to figure out how in the world I'm going to order these because their website doesn't seem to, like, is it all in German and doesn't seem to offer much in the way of instructions. Whereas, talking to him, he speaks English, and, is, and the uh, their Facebook page is also in German and English. And then it is AB Motorsports Decal. Uh, just search for that on Facebook. And they're going to be doing, like I said, some sets here from the what are known as the Nissan Mobile 500, which were some touring car races in Australia. So it's a little, again, another, uh, you know, a uh, little off the wall. You're not going to have the same model as everybody else if you look into these. And they're doing basically two cars from 1990, and that is these sets here. Uh, basically, you got Steven Soper and Joachim Winklehawk on one and some other drivers on the other. I forgot to look who. Uh, Perio is on this other car. And then they're also going to be doing the 1990 uh, and 1990, or excuse me, those were the 1990 cars. They're going to be doing the 91 and the 92 uh, cars that were sponsored by Castrol. They have some, uh, if you look at them here, some little bit of different associate sponsorships and things like that. Uh, again, I don't know what the price is going to be on this. They've talked about they've had some problems shipping into the United States with some packages taking five weeks to deliver or some just not showing up at all, which may just be a question of those packages are still stuck in customs because customs grabs your stuff from overseas. They'll keep it as long as they want to before they send it back out to you. Uh, I had a set of uh, of something from 1999 from Hobby Search. I can't even remember what it was at this point, but they uh, it took me 62 days to get that, or rather than the normal 17, because for a month and a half, Customs had it, and they just, I don't know, they didn't ever seem to open it. They just hang, held on to it and, I guess, cradled it at night while they slept or something. But at any rate, guys, that's, uh, that are, is the uh, AB Motorsports decal stuff, so keep an eye out on those guys. Uh, they're supposed to be having quite a few M3 uh, sets come out. We have to download some other stuff, uh, some other M3 decals were coming out. We'll do that next week because I'm not going to go dig through it and then recut this video. So, anyway, guys, that's what's uh, out there. I know a lot of people will be happy that the, that the uh, Comet Cyclone is out. And uh, we should be getting into the uh, meat and potatoes of January here shortly. Uh, there won't be any more kit announcements, I don't think, but we should start getting the kit releases to come in, as well as finding out what the Studio 27 decals for this month will be. If they're going to do some more M3, the Unitron decals are out there now. And, uh, you know, just all. If you're into race cars, it continues to be a very uh, exciting time. If you're not into the M3s, you're just like, oh my God, will you just shut up about it? So I will. We'll see you guys on the other side.